G'day guys, um, this can only mean one thing, we are not going fishing, um, because I've already been fishing, so what I want to do is a little bit of an introduction. Um, the video I'm going to show you is one what I made about probably a year and a half ago, so it's a little bit of a blast from the past. Um, yeah, what happened, I, I went down Rapid Bay um, one particular day and I filmed the introduction at the car park and I went up the jetty and put my camera on the railing and started filming and anyway, I had a good day's fishing, it was pretty good and yeah, I got home and I replayed my movie and I'd filmed it all in full forward so that was great, so I decided to go fishing again the next day um, so I went there the next day and yeah, went up the jetty and did it all again. Um, this time there was a nice chap fishing with me called Marty or Martin. Um, yeah, that was fun. First time I've ever videoed in front of someone because it uh, gets a bit daunting for people like me when you're filming yourself, you know, talking to a camera. It's kind of weird, but it's good fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so I made a film that day. Anyway, we caught leather jackets and we weren't sure on how big a leather jacket had to be. So Marty had a look on the measurings, on the fish measuring um, board, what's on the jetties, on all the jetties, and there was no leather jacket on there. So he Googled it on his phone and we found the legal size was 23 centimeters. So I wrote that on my video. And anyway, I went home, rah, rah, made my video and I ended up phoning up the fisheries and yeah, it turned out there isn't a legal size on a leather jacket. So the part I wrote on the video, the legal size for a leather jacket, I had to remove it. So I cut it out. So you will see the bits of the cuttings. I used a little bit from the day before on the video. I cut a little bit out, but it's a nice little video. It's a... It was a pleasant afternoon's fishing. Um, we caught some fish, which is good for anyone. It, you, you and your kids or any, you know, a bit of jetty fishing is good. Good family fun. So what I'm gonna do is run through my rig, what I use, my Tommy Rough rig, which is a very good rig for off a jetty. And I run through my squid rig as well, okay? So let's do that and um, yeah. Away we go. Oh, firstly, the rod I use for Tommy's, you know, it's a nice light rod. It's, it is actually nine foot long. You don't need a nine foot rod. Six foot would be fine. But just a light rod, light braid um, will do. Um, a small reel, so in your little 1000 reel, little day were aired. They're not a very expensive reel. But yeah, okay. So let's go through the rig. Firstly, I'm going to put a swivel onto the end of my braid so I can connect the rig to that swivel. Right. Okay, so I get my braid. I double it over. I like to double my braid over because it's pretty fine and it helps it not to slip. Right, put my braid through the eye of the swivel. Pull it through, hold hold my line there so I can hold the loop there, what I need to make my knot. So I wrap this up six times. Two, three, four, five, six. Then I go back through that loop, what I've held there with my finger, see? There's that loop put that through the loop and then back through the loop you just formed okay grab the tag in there and there's my knot I'll pull it up nice now it's braid but I will put a little bit of lubrication on there not much it's okay and just let it pull it and slide it up nice okay my swivels on now I'm going to trim off the tag ends, 
with my with, with my scissors. Done. Right, now I'm going to make my rig. When I'm on the jetty, or <laughs> wrong, that's not 25. When I'm on the jetty, I prefer to use like 10 or 12 pound line because you gotta lift your fish up. So right, so I'm gonna make this rig with 12 pound line. Right, I'll get the end of my line. I can make a loop here. Just a loop, um, help form the loop and just uh, like a granny knot, just there. Uh, the loop like this, like that. Okay, snip off that tag end and I can clip that onto my swivel. Okay. So I've got that joined onto my swivel like that. So just come down a little bit. Um, I did measure everything before for you, but I'm going to say probably 30 centimeters. So that is, and I'm going to make another loop. Just grab the line. Okay, and uh, just wrap it once twice up your main line back through that loop and just pull it I haven't lubricated it but I've done everything slow it'll be fine and just pull that tight there that's a nice dropper loop okay now just before that drop just below that dropper loop probably I know another 25 centimeters roughly um, I'm gonna cut my line and then I'm gonna tie my burly spring on one with a blood knot one two three four five will be okay with this nylon through that loop and back through the loop you've just formed. All right, pull it tight. Little bit of lubrication. Okay, we'll do the right thing. <laughs> All right, pull it tight. Okay, you can use a swivel if you like, but it doesn't matter, I've already got a swivel up there. Tie that straight on, that's fine. Snip off that little tag end. Okay, now I'm gonna hang a hook below this on a dropper loop. So I've got my hook. This is a number six. Uh, it's actually a fine worm hook. Then Pro Select mustards I like too, but you need, when you're using gents, because we are using gents for bait, you need a fine wire gauged hook. Right, I'll get my 12 pound line again. Just tie this hook on. Eight or ten pound line's good, but twelve is fine. I'll use another blood knot again. One, two, three, four, five. Back through that eye. Back through that eye. And just pull it up a little. Oop, that slipped. Well, I meant to do that, okay? Just grab that again. Right, we've saved it. Right. Now a little bit of lubrication. Okay. Now I'll just pull it all up. Lovely. Okay. Now that pulled nice and tight. Snip it off. Okay. Now come up. Only 25 centimeters is fine. Roughly. And just do a, another loop. You're right, just grab double your line, okay? And just wrap it back down your line. Come back up and go through that eye and just form another loop. Dead easy. And then just snip off your tag end. Right, get your burly spring. Just put your hook through. 
and through the eye of your loop pull it up and there you have it now I'll just uh, straighten this up there's your completed Tommy Rough Rig oh no it's not because I need another snood up here okay another hook I'll angle that down again Quickly tie on another hook, same way, two, three, four, five will do, through there, back through there, pull it there, get a lubrication, pull it up nice, you don't want it coming back over the eye hook like it just did there, there, so just pull it all up nice, perfect. Okay, snip off your little tag end. And come up again, 22 centimeters, not too long, just a nice little length. Okay, and do another loop. Another little loop and snip off that again. Right, now, now we've nearly got a completed rig. Put that aside. Get that other dropper loop, what was above your spring. Put your hook through um, and hook through there. Now, another way a chap mentioned on the YouTube channel was to put that loop through this loop okay and then get your hook and go back through that loop that's another good way you can do it okay and that pulls it up nice as well right so yeah it's good for everyone to leave any comments because it all helps doesn't it right, I'll lift that up there you have it Lovely, can you see that properly? Lovely Tommy rig for off a jetty. I've got my swivel there. First dropper loop, size six hook, burly spring, size six hook below. Now if the Tommies were big, it might be good to change to a, a suicide style hook. I have mentioned this before. This nice container to keep some extra snoods in. Okay, so these are a number six. There's one what's not tied up. Like a suicide style. They're a nice hook. Um, Tommy's can shake hooks off, shake off the hook really easily. So that size hook, that style of hook can help. Or if the if they're bigger, you go to a bigger hook because they've got such a big mouth. You can use a limerick style hook. That's a good hook as well. That's probably around maybe number seven. But yeah, generally a number six will do. Number seven, number four. I've got big tommies on huge hooks. And yeah, I'll be using maggots for bait. On the video I show you how I put the maggots on. I I just uh, whack them on anyway. Look beautiful. Beautiful all over the table. Yeah, I just whack them on. I, I You see it on the video, I just throw them on because I actually think they release a bit of burly when they're popped. If I was fresh water fishing, I would just clip them on real fine. So they like wiggle around like that, but not necessarily in the ocean. But you might want to do that from time to time. Anything can help. <laughs> but yeah. So there's that rig. That is also, if you want to put a float on, you could break off your swivel there and 
you know, slide a float up your line, a couple of floats, float stoppers. There's your float stoppers. And you got them rubber ones, like uh, the same guy reminded me about them ones too, they're good. They're rubber float stoppers. Um, so yeah, great rig, you can put a float above if you like, but this is about not using a float. <laughs> But anyway, good rig. So that's ready to rock and roll. Right, in the burly spring I put burly. I use my burly. Now on my video where, where I showed you how to make this burly, so you can refer back to that if you like, to see how you make it. But I forgot to show you beginners because I had a comment, he asked me if I put this into my burly spring dry and I said to myself, what a wally, I didn't show you guys to add water to it. <laughs> Don't know, I'm going to show you right now how to do that. So this is my burly, I take it Tommy fishing. I get some water and I add a bit of water. I'll turn this down. I add water to my burly, just slowly, not too much. I actually shown you this on the brim video, but everyone doesn't watch all my videos. But you got to mix it in properly. What we want to do is combine it so we can squeeze it into the spring. But do not go overboard with the water. You'll make it too sloppy. Okay. You can see what's happening. You got to work this through properly. Now you don't want to have it too tight in your springs either. Actually, that's mixing up real good. Just that little bit of water. Okay, look, I can grab some of that now and squeeze it into a ball. And that's, that's nice actually. It's real nice. So what you do when you're fishing, you get it and you put, squeeze it into your spring like that. Not too tight. The harder you squeeze it in there, the harder it's going to be for the burly to come out. So that is a good thing sometimes because you might want to hang your bait there and just have your burly slowly releasing. But that's how you do it, okay? Because you want it, you really do want burly to come out and the fish go like a gang and while they're there they eat your bait and it all happens real quick. Right, so that's that bit. The Tommy rig, and that's what we're mainly fishing for in the video. Okay, I'll just straighten that up again. Oh, what a hassle. Don't fall over on me. <laughs> right, there's that. I'll put that aside. Right. When I'm down the jetty, I also throw out my squid rod. And on my squid rod, I've got a float because you can just throw this out on the jetty and that'll sit there. Firstly, when you go up a jetty, currents will be gonna, gonna be going to the left or the right. Generally, in our state, when the, when the tide's coming in, the tide will run to the left, facing the ocean. Stand on a jetty facing the ocean, the tide will be going for, for, to the left. If it's running out, it'll be going to the right. But anyway, you you have to fish with burly. You want to have you have to fish with the current. Um. So anyway, with the current, you can throw your squid float out, and it will just stay there while you catch catching tommies. Keep having a look over, and if your float goes under, you catch a squid. Okay, so I have the squid float on a leader of line. What I've got tied onto my braid over here. Um. I've got it tied on with an old bright knot. This is twenty five pound leader line. Um, one day I'll show you how to do an old bright knot, but not this one. You you can Google it. Other people can show you. Um, but anyway, right. I've got a trace of line on here so my float can slide up to my sliding knot. There's my sliding knot right there. This knot actually slides on my line. I have done a video on how to tie one of these knots. See that moves. Um, and it works as a float stopper, see? Float goes up to that knot, and it's really good knot. Anyway, 
um, so I can adjust the depth on how deep I want to fish. Okay, right, I'm, oh, I just threw my squid jag over the table, I'll go get it. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> right, on my squid rod, on the video, you'll see I'm using a Tommy for bait, a nice little Tommy rough. I'm going to show you how I put it on. A lot of the time, I used to push it through the eye, but on this one, because this is a different, like, jag, to, to have the Tommy stay above that jag, I've gone between its eyes. Um, I push the jag in between its eyes, and then up the spine. Well, while I pushed it up, I actually twisted the Tommy a bit so it went around the spine. And okay, and then the jag comes out the bottom of the tail there like that. And it will only go down as far as, you know, the hard part of the head on the Tommy. So you can put that straight onto your swivel. Okay, that's that, your squid bait. Um, I've got a float stopper here. If you want, you can bring your sliding knot down for shallower water and you could fix your float between your stopper knot and your float stopper so it doesn't move at all if it was in shallower water. But anyway, that's it. That's a nice long trace under a float and that's a good way to put your Tommy rough on. I think that's it. Um, and one other thing, if there's a strong current while you're fishing for your Tommies, you can get yourself a small sinker. Uh, you can, one of these, so there's all different sizes in there. I think you can see them. Well, let's get one out. If I can open it. There we go. Okay, you can get one of these little sinkers and you can easily open up your burly spring and hang one on there like that. Okay, a little bit more weight if the current's flowing really hard. Um, if you've got some barrel sinkers at home, you can chop them up with a hammer and a knife <laughs> into pieces like this. Okay, then you can get a piece of fishing line and loop it and push it in to the piece, into the piece and flatten it with a hammer and you can make some lovely little, well there they all are, some lovely little sinkers out of barrel sinker. There you go. If you want to make some little sinkers quick and easy, if you haven't got any, but there you go. Another little tip. Yeah, so you can use a burly pot if you like, hanging on a rope with some bread in it and some pilchers that will go with the current and that'll have Tommy Ruffs going everywhere. All right, guys, um, and before you watch the video, let me say, hope you all have a happy Christmas and I hope I can upload this before Christmas. If not, um, I hope you all had a happy Christmas, okay. Let's go and watch my video. And yeah, thank you all for watching. And wow, 4,000 subscribers. Can you believe that? Not huge, but it's good for a guy like me. <laughs> all right, let's go fishing. Well, here we are, we've made it. Rapid Bay, hell, it's looking good down here. Let's get down there, see if we can get a squid. We're mainly here for Tommy's, but I'm gonna throw out my float, like I said. And yeah, see how we go. There's the old Rapid Bay Quarry. It's unreal, back in the days, there used to be a big conveyor belt on that old jetty. And it used to, you know, load up with 
stone from that quarry go all the way up the conveyor belt and straight onto a ship This area is quite famous for the leafy sea dragon. Wow, that water is so clear. That is great squid water. Look at that. Clear as. Yeah, I wish they'd fix that jetty. Oh well, at least they built this one for us. Well, let's get up here and do some fishing. There's all the fish regulations. And when you walk up a jetty to come squid fishing, look for the ink if you're not sure where to fish, because that's where people have been catching squid around that reef down there look at this one here <laughs> perfect print of a squid g'day guys I've just I've, I'm here at Rapid Bay and there's a fellow fishing here with me called Marty nice to meet you check that out he's just got a nice little leather jacket beauty yeah he'll taste good yeah, look at him. See if, uh, he's any good size. Yeah, ripper. Alright, now Marty's gone to check out the size of that fish. I'll uh, throw in my squid rod. I'm using a bait, a Tommy Ruff, on a jag like I've showed you before. I haven't weighed it at the top, but that'll be right. I've pushed the jag in the hard part of the head so it won't slide down the hook. So there you go. And I've got my sliding knot. It's I'm guessing it might be 15 foot deep here, so I'm going to fish about 10 foot deep with my sliding knot, okay? So we'll cast it in. I've got my super duper burly. Put a bit of that in my spring, not too tight, because you want it to come out. Nice and loosely. And we'll whack some maggots on the hook. Just any way will be fine. I'm not fussed. That's four or five should be alright. Even two or three sometimes. Doesn't matter whatever you do on the day. That's what I'm going to do. Lovely. Put five on there. That's it. Ready to go. Two baits of maggots. One burly spring. Done. Now we want fish. Away we go. Got a fighter on here. This one might be a reasonable leather jacket. <laughs> oh, he's hooked in the belly. Oh no, he's in the mouth, nearly. Um, and to reverse keeps going on me real. <laughs> there he comes. Full spine leather jacket. There you go. Full spine leather jacket. They're good eating. Nice looking fish. He's hooked good in his leather jacket. Nice Australian herring or Tommy Ruff. Oh, I'm 
already subscribed. Have you really? Yes, yes, I'm not even joking. <laughs> there you go. Oh, this fish goes, wow. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I knew, I swear, I knew you from, I knew it. I knew it. See, this is a good fish. That is stunning. This isn't a leather jacket. This is a zebra fish. <laughs> Excellent. Come on, zebra. Grace, have a look at this beautiful fish. Check that out, guys. A zebra fish. Straighten yourself out, fella. A lot of people confuse them with ludric, but it's a zebra fish. Great fish. He can go back like maggots as well. <laughs> yeah, the purple in him is wicked, isn't it? Stunning. Yeah, absolutely. Started, I was mistaken for the literary. Yeah, me too. I've yep. uh, got lots of comments um, there you go. telling me off about it. And I was so yeah, on video. Uh, well, hopefully you get yeah. lucky and good today as well. This is a leather jacket. Yeah, he's digging in. in the side of the head. A bit tricky with the anti-reverse of a pretty little leather jacket. Oh, we had a double head of him. That one. <laughs> Let you go, mate. Whoa. Whoa. The good one got off, and I got the little one. Nice. How do you line? How much worm do you use when you do it? Um, just enough to cover your hook. Just enough to cover the hook. Yeah. Some. About. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, what's this? A moonshiner. Another. On the worm. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, moonshiner. I haven't caught one of these for a while. Beautiful little fish. It's a moonshiner. Great. He's nice, isn't he? A little bit yellow in him. Colors. Yeah. Lovely. Right. Right, come here, leathery. How do you see what I'm coming with? There you need to Whoa. Whoa, there you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, the book bad stuff. I haven't put Burley in that time. So the Tommy stay away and I get that leathery. I've got three good pull downs on mine. Yeah. But I reckon. Right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's so crush. <laughs> I think I spent about 20 minutes just getting eaten off my hooks. Mm. Yeah, man. <laughs> Can't wait to actually pull one in. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, <laughs> big leathery. Look at him. He well, might be that big one I saw. Got a nice leather jacket. Four spine leather jacket, four spines on his tail. I forgot the name of that type of wrasse. Uh, small one. But it's just beautiful colours on it. Isn't it? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful colours. Big 
one. Oh, yes. Stunning. A cracker. <laughs> so if you don't fall off, he's only on one tentacle. <laughs> you beauty. Check him out. <laughs> Tracking squid. <laughs> Lovely. Gotta be happy with that. <laughs> yeah, cracker. Wicked. Yeah. Here's a nice one. Well done. Nice. Beauty. <laughs> Check out the weather, what a day. Well guys, that's me finished. It was a, a good, good fun little session down here at Rapid Bay. Um, met a nice chap called Marty, who's on the video. Some other nice people come up for a walk. You couldn't have wished for a better day. It was just absolutely beautiful. The uh, weather people have got the weather totally wrong. Absolutely, absolutely wrong. It was supposed to be blowing southwest. And it is calm as, I don't think you can see it anymore, but you can see it on the video. But we caught lots of fish, um, leather jackets, um, yeah, loads, a few different species of fish and lots of Tommies. Um, um, there was loads of, loads of little Tommies. That's all the bigger ones what I kept to eat, threw lots of fish back. But yeah, all in all, good fun. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Um, I'll try and get out and do a little bit more fishing. Yeah, and for you to watch and for me to do. <laughs> yeah. All right, all the best. Take care. Adios.